Welcome to a bonus episode of I Was 8. I'm Larry Fedorik, and a bonus episode usually means that another season is complete. That's right, season 3, done. That means a total of 39 different episodes of my personal journal storytelling podcast are done. And season 4 starts promptly in a few days. Yeah, 39 episodes. You know, when I started this project back in the dead of winter of 2019, I... I wasn't sure that I'd get here, but here we are. And of course, all of these podcasts available on your favorite platform, wherever you get your podcasts. But I want to talk a moment about the I Was 8 YouTube channel. Back near the beginning, I thought I needed a YouTube channel, just another way for you to access the audio. And then it kind of grew. I thought, well, I can't just have a blank screen, but I'll put some slides up. I had some visuals, some graphics we'd done for social media and some other areas. And uh, then I thought, well, I can't just have one slide up there. What about different slides, different colors? Hey, you know what? I also have some pictures from when I was eight of my town, my school, my classmates, me. How about those? So I started scanning those and adding them. And then there was this episode called Mrs. Nowak about this woman who used to visit my mom for coffee when I was a kid, and she scared the heck out of me. So I began to think, what if I would just draw a picture of what I remember her like and why she was so frightening to me. And it turns out that I could draw just like I could when I was eight. The skill set had not changed. No added talent in drawing. But it kind of turned out because it looked like pictures that I had saved from when I was eight. Then it became a thing. I started drawing and drawing. It was very therapeutic, just like those coloring books that they sell for adults and things. I found it very relaxing to just draw and color. And now the videos are like 70% of my drawings and pictures and only about 30% graphics. So by all means, continue to listen to I Was 8 on your favorite platform. But remember, there is an I Was 8 YouTube channel where you will see little bonuses of drawings and pictures along with the stories that you've come to enjoy. I also want to take a moment on the bonus episode to talk about another project that I'm involved in. Let me give you the background. Years ago, my friend Michael Bennett LaRue, who is an actor and a writer and a filmmaker and a musician, told me about a film they were trying to make. And he said, you know, there's a part in it that would be perfect for you. Are you interested? And I'm like, yes, I am. This would be fun. A couple of years actually went by and I'd forgotten about it. I thought maybe they'd cast someone else. And he called me and said, hey, what are you doing this August? I'm like, August? You know, I got a week's vacation coming up. That was when I still had a job to take a vacation from Bell Media Screw Job Run. Oh, sorry. So, yeah, so I had a week's vacation, and the next thing I know, we're in a car traveling up north. My friend's buddy had a huge house up north, and my character lives in this big, beautiful mansion-like house, and that's where we were going to shoot my scenes. It was one of the most fun things I've ever done. And now the movie has a Facebook page and is very close to coming out. It's called Start Stop, and it's about a fictional punk band. And my character in this movie is rather unscrupulous. Michael Bennett LaRue joined me from his home in Toronto, and I asked him about Start Stop. So let's say I'm on my favorite streaming service, and I see the movie Start Stop, and I'm intrigued, so I read the description. What might it say? It might say, uh, the film the RCMP did not want you to see about the most important band of all time. It might, uh, yeah, it might might say, uh, uh, in 2014, Jim Banfield embezzled $42,000 from the Canadian Documentary Film Fund uh, to make a film about Canadian punk rock icon Start Stop. And uh, the film that you're watching is all the evidence that the RCMP has. 
So the film itself, is it a uh, documentary, mockumentary, comedy? Uh, uh, you, you probably hate categorizing it, but how would one? Uh, it is a, uh, um, a balls-to-the-wall comedy, laugh a minute. We, we are, it's about jokes, 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 jokes. It's a, it's a mockumentary. Uh, we, we're trying to make it pretty funny. Uh, everyone in, in the movie is really silly. Uh, and it moves really, really fast. So you're an actor, you're a writer, you've you're an independent filmmaker. You've made movies, but this one in particular, uh, tell me about it. Where the idea came from? My a friend and I, Matt. Uh, he he was just learning how to play the drums, and I'd never really played the electric guitar before. Um, and so we would uh, get quite intoxicated on uh, Friday and Saturday evenings, and uh, we would. Uh, play music as loud as we possibly could uh, and we both like uh, loud punk rock music and we would write these we would just write these songs that were like 30 seconds long and we would move on and we would and then and then we just started writing them and then all of a sudden we started making jokes because you know him and I just make a lot of jokes and all of a sudden they were really funny and then a friend heard these songs and was like this is really funny and we were like no 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 this isn't this isn't real this is just something that him and i do that we think is really funny that no one else would and uh, they're like no 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 this is really funny you should go and do this so we started playing live and then we came up with this idea of this this, this band this two-piece that had invented punk rock music and like we just built this big you know, just him and I just making jokes back and forth to each other, really. And then we came up with an idea to make a five-minute video um, before we played. And that five-minute video uh, quickly turned into what we have is an over an hour long uh, film right now. That in yeah, that includes this other, this o other whole other story about the guy who's making a, a film about these guys and the and the horrible road that he travels down. All right. So, and that's Jim Banfield. And that's Jim Banfield, yeah, the guy who has embezzled uh, money from the Canadian Film Document, uh, the ca yeah, the Canadian <laughs> Documentary Film Fund, and to make this movie. But he's really, but he's really, uh, really just doing it for his own, uh, <laughs> for his own personal gain. So he's doing it on the cheap, so he can pocket the money. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's this, his plan. This part I remember because now let's reveal why I'm so interested in Jim Banfield because I got to play Jim Banfield. Yes, and um, we have been showing. Yeah, Larry uh, is the Jim Banfield of uh, of Start Stop, and uh, we've been showing a couple people the film. And Larry, the reaction is unreal. It's they 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 say to me. Where did you find this guy? They believe you right away. They're so invested. It's like they they're they're laughing the moment you're on screen. They're like people are so like you just nailed it out of the park. Um you you took it really seriously and and it really shows. It just it's immediate like like as soon as you walk on the screen, people are like just they're they're reacting to you immediately. Immediately. Well, that man, that's great yeah. to hear. And I you and I and uh, Q, the director, and we would watch our work at the end of the day, but I haven't seen uh, it in context, so I'm looking forward to that. When might people yeah. actually see this film? When and where? We're going to be submitting to film festivals. Um, once film festivals, you know, once we sort out what they are <laughs> right you know right. when i started this this was um this is this has been a project that i've been working on for quite a while you know my my goal was to have it to play in film festivals so i hope that it returns to that so yeah um but, but what's next is um working on a trailer uh working on uh the soundtrack um which is like 70 percent complete and then working on the the plan for for going ahead into film festivals and and uh and then definitely going to be having a showing in Toronto, like regardless of uh, of what happens. I think there's uh, there's enough people that are that are excited and that have been uh, supportive of the project that I think if I if I have a showing in Toronto, that I think people will be there. There's a page on Facebook. People can follow you there and start to get more information on Start Stop. Yeah, just uh, Start Stop, one word. Start Stop. Uh, give me that line again. The film, the RCMP don't want you to see. Is that? Yeah, the the RCMP, uh, the film the RCMP doesn't want you to see about the most important band of all time. All right. 
and the uh, co-writer, producer, and star, Michael Bennett LaRue. Michael, thank you. Thank you, and star Larry Fedoric. Huge star. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Right. Oh, girl! This is some of the start-stop soundtrack, by the way. What a band. Michael Bennett LaRue of the movie Start Stop, starring Larry Fedoric. All right, Larry, get over yourself. You're not starring, you're just in it. Michael Bennett LaRue is the star of that movie. Wait till you see him in it. He's also co-writer and producer. Back to I Was 8, season 4, as I said, starts this week with The Big Trip. And some of the other upcoming episodes include Halloween, The Comedians, The Boy Scouts, The Roommate, and more. Hopefully I'll get them all done before my huge movie career takes off. I wonder what big, famous Hollywood actress I'll end up dating. Yeah, I should start thinking about that. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for supporting I Was 8. I love you for it. And that's just not something you say. I really do. Talk soon. Oh, oh, oh. I almost forgot. Oh, boy, yeah. Listen, I Was 8 still doesn't have a full-time sponsor, but this episode, the bonus episode number three, has a sponsor. Where is that thing? I almost forgot. Oh, here it is. All right. This bonus episode of I Was 8 is brought to you by Auntie Mama's Frozen Meat Pies. Please enjoy responsibly. Mmm, mmm. Wouldn't an Auntie Mama's frozen meat pie go good right now? You darn tootin'. You know, over a hundred years ago, my great-grandma started baking meat pies for soldiers going off to war. Most of them just called her Auntie Mama. She started with a pie crust flakier than your local Green Party candidate. And inside, well, sir, meat. No spices, no gravy, no nothing else. Just a big hunk of meat inside a pie, the way God intended. Some folks say it tastes just like beef. You won't find Auntie Mama's frozen meat pies in your grocer's freezer. And the government shut down our little bakery years ago. But every once in a while, I'll park a truck full of them near an off-ramp, look for the hand-painted wooden sign leaning up against the tailgate, that's your assurance of quality. Just pull over cash only, and before you know it, you'll be dining like a soldier off to war. Auntie Mama's frozen meat pie. The greatest frozen meat pie you might never have. Side effects may include headaches, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, diarrhea, bloating, shortness of breath, coughing, hair loss, muscle pain, itchy rash, blindness, nostalgia, luminescence, and an inflated sense of self-worth. If symptoms persist, contact your local game warden. See you real soon.